So yeah, with the performance that this tablet's put now and the fact that we can basically turn this into a desktop PC, I think it's really hard to beat something like this given the price. What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again recently on the channel. We took a look at this Lenovo tablet. Now this is the Lenovo P11 Pro Gen 2 and it definitely offers a lot of features for a decent price when you compare it to others on the market right now. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what Lenovo is calling productivity mode. Personally, I call it desktop mode. We can basically turn this into a full-fledged Android-powered desktop PC. Now, obviously, using this tablet in tablet mode is going to work out just fine because that's exactly what this thing is. But we've got another feature here, which I personally look for when I'm taking a look at newer Android devices on the market. This does have an 11.2 inch 120 hertz OLED display, so the built in screen's awesome. But connecting this to a larger display definitely opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, with productivity mode, we can use it directly on the built in screen here. But it doesn't quite function the same as, you know, running this over USB Type-C to HDMI. Now we've got multi-window, multi-app support. We've got a snap feature here. But the best way to use desktop mode, is what I'm going to call it here, is connecting this to, let's say, your TV or a monitor. You can do this over USB Type-C using an adapter that you pick up from Amazon. There's several available. I'll leave some links in the description. You can go with a cheaper adapter that also has some USB ports, maybe Ethernet, SD card reader or you could go with a dock. Now, one thing that I've been using is a Steam Deck dock because they're plentiful and very cheap. Or if you've already got a display that supports USB Type-C video in, that's probably what you want to use. This is the Pixio PX27 Pro, and it does 65 watt PD fast charging out and video over USB Type-C. This also has a couple USB ports on the rear, so all I needed to do was plug in my mouse and keyboard combo to the monitor and all of that's gonna work over that single USB Type-C cable to the tablet. So now we've got desktop mode up and running, and one thing I really love about Lenovo's productivity mode is you see my mouse can be used on the external display or the tablet itself. We can scroll right down to the tablet screen, and from the settings we can set this up. Right now I've got it set up so, you know, my external monitor is above the tablet. You can set it up to the left-hand side, right-hand side, or below the tablet. That way, when you move your mouse cursor off screen, it's going to go over to that secondary display. This comes in really handy for moving back and forth. We can run apps on both of these at the same exact time, and we have more than enough power to run them. This is actually a pretty powerful tablet, and going into this, I was a little skeptical, just because this is a CPU I haven't used before, but uh, this actually has the MediaTek Companio 1300T. It's an 8-core ARM SoC. We've got four Cortex-A78 cores at 2.6 GHz and four Cortex-A55 cores at 2 GHz. It's using the Mali G77 MC9 GPU. You can pick this up with either 4 or 8 GB of RAM. By the way, this is only the 4 GB model, the lowest-end model that they offer. It supports a micro SD card. We've got an 11.2 inch, 120 hertz, 2.5K OLED display, which looks absolutely amazing. Quad speakers with Dolby Atmos and an 8200 milliamp hour battery. Now I will tell you that this CPU is on par with the Snapdragon 870. It's actually beaten out the GPU performance by about 9%. CPU performance is under the 870 by about 5%. But overall, we've got a pretty powerful little tablet here. And given the price of everything on the market right now, this is a really, really good deal. It's got more than enough power to play any game from Google Play, and it'll even emulate GameCube, Wii, and PS2 games. And using it like a desktop PC actually works out really well. We've got multi-app, multi-window support. We'll go ahead and launch Chrome here. We've got this opened up. We can snap it to the left-hand side. We can full screen it. We can minimize it. We'll open up a second app here. We'll just go with the calculator. Got this running. And we'll do, let's say, a game at the same time. So we've got all three apps running on screen at the same time. And we can pull these down to the bottom screen if we want to but I'm gonna leave them all on the external monitor here. So we've got great multitasking support, and remember, this is only the four gigabyte model, so we've only got four gigs of RAM. The eight gigabyte model will perform better when more apps are opened up, but you know, overall performance between the two is gonna be the same if you're just running a single app. They're using the same CPU, it's just RAM that's different. Another thing we have here is Widevine Level 1, so we can get our HD content from Netflix, HBO, and everything like that. I'll show you a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube real quick. We'll find a demo video. 
So this is 4K 60 FPS HDR. We'll restart it. Make sure we're at 4K and I'll also turn stats for nerds on. This Companio 1300T does have enough power to run 4K 60 really well. And we've also got Wi-Fi 6 here, but we could use Ethernet while we're connected to an adapter if you want to use it that way. So this does need to switch over to 4K. I know it's a bit hard to see stats for nerds, and on the initial load in, we always get a few drop frames, but throughout the video, it's not going to drop anymore. And there it is. 4K, we've got four drop frames, and it's just going to stay right there the whole video. So 4K, 60, HDR, looking really good here. So obviously, media consumption on this tablet itself, whether you want to use it on the built-in screen or external monitor, looks great. It's also going to function just fine. And when it comes to getting some work done, you could always easily edit documents here with a keyboard. Now I've got it set up. The keyboard's going to come up on screen, but I'm using a physical keyboard right now. You can disable this from the productivity settings. I just didn't do it. And I've got a couple docs open right now, so I can go ahead and edit these. But again, it really depends on what you want to do with it. Email checking, document editing. You could download a photo or video editor from Google Play and use it directly on the big screen if you want to. I personally don't use Microsoft 365, but I downloaded it. Oh, I got to sign in, so I'm not going to use it. But yeah, this is another productivity application that you can download and use in desktop mode. No problem at all. But one of my favorite things to do with a setup like this is actually game on it. You can use native Android games. It does support a controller. I've got an Xbox controller connected. We'll just start up Asphalt 9. As you can see, we're in window mode, but we can easily go full screen and it's going to fill the full screen here. We've got the proper aspect ratio in productivity mode. I don't notice any kind of performance difference between the two, even while this is connected and got both screens running. I mean, everything's functioning like it should. Now, if running an external monitor with a different layout isn't for you, all you need to do is head over to productivity and we can change the layout here. So we can go to Extended, which we're in right now, or we can go to Mirror, and basically it's just going to mirror the tablet's display to the external display, but as you can see, we've got those black bars on the side because it's not the proper aspect ratio. But with it set up like Mirror Mode, we can also still game, and this would come in really handy for plugging this into an HDMI game capture device. That way you don't have to use any of the CPU power in the tablet to kind of record your display here. Call of Duty Mobile, high settings, 60 FPS, and I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. As you can see, between the tablet's display and the external display, there's zero latency because we're using a wired connection. We don't have to worry about Wi-Fi or casting or anything like that. So when it comes down to it, we've got native Android gaming in the bag with something like this. But what about emulation? Well, in my original video, I did show off a few emulators running. We had some PSP, some GameCube, some Wii, and some PS2. And it transfers just as well over to this external monitor in desktop mode. Here we have the North American version of God of War 2, so we are at 60 FPS. Ether SX2, Vulcan back in. Really great performance here. This is one of the harder ones to run, and as you can see, we are at 60. Right there on the edge, 5960, but definitely really playable. And this also handles GameCube and Wii games really well. I'm using the development version of Dolphin. It's an official version. It's not MMJ or anything like that. And here's the Wii version of Sonic Colors running at full speed. We're using the Vulcan back in here with this MediaTek chip. So yeah, desktop mode, otherwise known as productivity mode, has turned out to be really awesome on this tablet. I'm glad to see other manufacturers kind of coming to market with a desktop style operating system for their Android devices. We've had Samsung DeX for such a long time and it's definitely at the top of its game, but I have been seeing some of these other companies kind of catching up with their interface. Motorola recently released what they're calling Ready4, that's their kind of desktop operating system for their higher end phones, and it's really enjoyable to use, but you know, seeing Lenovo do it with productivity mode like it's working right now on this lower end tablet is really awesome. The 4GB model of the P11 Pro Gen 2, which I have here, was recently on sale for $229 on eBay and Lenovo's official website. After I posted my video, they did jack the price up due to demand, but just keep an eye on it, because at $229, it's really hard to beat a tablet like this, given the price of everything else. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in seeing what this tablet can really do, I'll leave a link to my original video in the description. I'll also leave some links to Lenovo's website and eBay in case you want to learn more. But uh, that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.